Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Uh, sometimes walking around the ship, talking about different parts of the vessel uh, is difficult, and I really wish I had a small uh, model to illustrate things. Uh, however, I can't walk through all the compartments on the ship uh, carrying a model, or by the end of the first day, it'll be broken 10 different ways. Uh, so that's why I love that Kobe, uh, which is a Polish building block company uh, that is compatible with other major building block companies, has finally made a USS New Jersey. Check it out. New Jersey nameplate, uh, the BB-62 at the bow and stern. Uh, this is the first building block kit of the Battleship New Jersey. So they made this kit, and I'm not worried about breaking it. If I break it, it's real easy to put back together again. So uh, we're gonna use this model to illustrate a couple of pieces around the ship that I've always wanted to talk about that uh, were, were just too complex uh, to show a model or, or talk about on screen. So first off, we're back here on the fantail, uh, pretty close to turret number three. Um, right behind me, you can see the air vents, which show up here. But uh, we're gonna be talking about the aircraft catapults, which are pinwheeling a little bit because of the, the breeze out here on the river. But uh, we often talk about the catapults and uh, what that means during World War II. And people ask about them all the t time, but there's no remnants of them left. Uh, even the weld marks from where these were removed from the ship in the, 19, uh, in the late 40s or by 1950 at the latest uh, are no longer there because they've been obscured by the 1980s flight deck. You can see that the catapults rotate. And the idea is the ship is sailing along and you can turn this catapult off the side of the ship. It's a 15 pound black powder charge and it's not a catapult like you push that down and it shoots the thing up into the air. The charge shoots the plane down this track and then the wings produce enough lift that it can take off. So the plane flies around on its mission. Uh, the reason the battleship carried planes was to spot the fall of shot for the main battery guns. Uh, the top level of the superstructure here is your main battery rangefinder. That can see about 13 or 14 miles. That's the whole reason why the tower is that tall. Battleships have significantly taller superstructures than other ships because their guns shoot at considerably farther range. Uh, so remember these things have a range of about 23 miles. So if you want to see where your shells are landing past those original uh, 13 miles, you put the plane out there and it can spot the full shot for you. Okay, so it does this, and it's got to come back and land somehow. There's no flight deck like on an aircraft carrier. So the battleship slows down to a set speed. It's something like between five and 10 knots. It is creating a smooth, flat wake behind the ship. So the plane can come down, it's got floats on the bottom, and it just lands on that wake and taxis up to the back of the ship. And then the crane can pick it up and come around and set it right back on its catapult and ready to go. There's also this little uh, flat area between the two catapults. Originally, Iowa-class battleships had three aircraft, uh, but by World War II, they, they had decided that extra one was, was no good, and they got down to two. Uh, so Libby and I briefly talked about showing you in this ship scale how far away the guns could shoot, uh, but much like you can't see over the horizon, you, you can't really see that distance on film. This model is about three feet long, 2,500 pieces. Uh, it is officially 1,300 scale. So it's a little bit bigger than the 1 350th scale plastic models that companies like Tamea make. So uh, if you want to divide the 42,000 yard range of these guns by 300, that gives you about 140 yards, which uh, us sitting here just aft of turret three in roughly this area, uh, would put you somewhere around turret one and two at the other end of the ship. Uh, and looking up the end of the ship there, you, you can't see that far from back here. You guys might have seen some pictures of this. Uh, this crane was retained up until 1982 when the flight deck was put back there. And you might have seen some pictures of the ship in mothballs with the crane laying down on the deck without any tension. And then when the ship is in service and all the wires are working, the crane comes back up to its normal position here. 
or if we're operating helicopters, you'll see pictures like off Vietnam with the crane pointing straight off the back of the ship. Again, it's pretty breezy here on the river, so all this stuff is just pinwheeling. Another cool feature back here where we are is this anti-aircraft gun position, which is roughly where I'm sitting right now. Uh, this position would have had uh, nine 20 millimeter guns in it. It is an odd number because the uh, starboard side over there had four guns along the side, two across the back, and this side only had three guns along the side, uh, primarily because some of the fittings here and, and a hatch that's no longer here was in the way of the mount for the other gun. So if you've ever looked at uh, Iowa class battleships during World War II had 49 20 millimeter guns, uh, why is it asymmetrical when, when you've got the same stuff on both sides? It's this gun position back here, which we were able to reveal uh, the other year when we ripped up the teak wood deck, but unfortunately, when we put the new deck down, we had to obscure it. One other thing that I love that I can use this model to demonstrate is when you're looking at a 16-inch gun turret here behind me, um, you're seeing just the gun house. And if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, the gun house is just the tip of the iceberg, and there's a five-story rotating structure below that. Well, how the heck do I demonstrate that to someone? Ha-ha! Check that out. This goes practically to the bottom of the ship, and look, it's even black and yellow shells for armor piercing and green and yellow for high capacity. And you can even see some of the uh, rotation and elevation motors here modeled. So one of my favorite features of this particular kit, it comes with the pieces for all four Iowa-class battleships. So if your favorite is Iowa or Wisconsin or maybe New Jersey, uh, you've got the name tags of all four, you've got the hall numbers of all four, and the uh, instruction book even comes with the last couple of pages tells you how to specifically make the model to represent the different ships. Uh, specifically, this model is representing an Iowa-class battleship in uh, near the end of the war, when New Jersey and Iowa come out of their major yard period at uh, Puget Sound at the end of the war. They've got the square bridge like Missouri and Wisconsin are built with, and they get the measure 22 camouflage scheme. So you notice how it's uh, dark gray. Realistically, that, that scheme would be dark blue, but there isn't a building block color for that. There's only like the, the regular blue color. Uh, so that's perfectly fine. Uh, but ev everything to the lowest point of the hull, and then anything above that is the light gray color, which is your standard uh, building block gray color. So it's depicting that camouflage scheme, it's depicting that any aircraft armament. One of uh, those changes that's very interesting between the first two Iowas and the last two is this particular 20 millimeter gun position up here by the Mark 37 director. Iowa and New Jersey have that gun position up there. However, because it's on the 05 level, and there isn't any sort of magazine or anything close to that, it was a bear to get ammunition to it. So on Missouri and Wisconsin, they moved that gun from up here to this tub right here, and they just make it a three gun position tub instead of a uh, two gun position tub. I don't even think they changed the size of it. I think they just changed the spacing of the uh, gun mounts and ready service ammunition lockers in there. One of my favorite features of that particular gun tub is it is still visible on New Jersey, on Missouri and Wisconsin at least, and I can't remember on Iowa, um, they just cut that platform off and re-welded a brand new square platform on it. But on us, you can see it over my shoulder here, uh, where there is still that round cutout that used to be this gun tub, uh, and then they just welded new plate onto it in the 80s when they were putting the chaff launchers up there in its place. Uh, another major change would be the removal of these five-inch guns when the ship got its missile battery, and they basically flattened out this deck. Really cool feature. You would think that they would cut off this whole 40-millimeter uh, gun position, but they didn't. Uh, if you look above me, you can still see the curve there just forward of the Harpoon cruise missiles, uh, which is this center gun tub, and they just built the platform on top of that. Likewise, you would think that the foremast got cut off entirely, 
but it seems like they just pulled the old antennas off and got rid of uh, this part here and then use that as the forward leg of the tripod that gets built around the uh, forward funnel. I love traditional model kits and I have built more Ravel Iowa class battleship models than uh, the Navy ever built. Uh, I, I've got more Iowas than, than were ever completed or even planned. But I really love building block kits like this because you can change them to look different. You can use them in education like we are to illustrate differences on the individual ships or on the ships over time uh, without being afraid of breaking them permanently, at least. I'm not sure what's my favorite feature of this model. It could be the little anchor chains right here. This is the port side capstan that, that this model is actually sitting on right now. Uh, but I think it's the bell hanging up on the underside of the 08, which you can still, well, you can't really see it too well from here, but uh, is still hanging up there. I've built a couple of building block models like this of Iowa class battleships, and I think this is the first one that actually has the bell. So I'm excited to announce that we are going to release our 1000th YouTube video on November 30th. And in honor of our channel being around for that long, uh, Kobe has partnered with us to uh, donate to the museum a couple of models like this one. You're going to have to build them yourself. I'm not building them for you. This was 10 hours of work. Uh, but a couple of models like this one that we're going to give away to you viewers. There is a link in the description down below to Kobe's website if you're interested in uh, getting one of these for your household for Christmas. They make a great gift. Uh, or you could just do what I did and get one for yourself. I, I highly recommend that you order this uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, you can also click on the link in the description down below to our contest to sign up and we'll do a couple of random drawings to see which of our viewers get one of these for free. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support uh, that you guys have given us, and we really appreciate the support of Kobe. I love building Kobe blocks. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.